today we will discuss about zoonotic infections. It is one of the chapters of miscellaneous topics in Appurbha Shastri. So first we will see what are zoonotic infections. They are infections which are naturally transmitted from vertebrate animals to humans. Classification Anthropozoonosis. They are transmitted from animals to man. Zoanthroponosis, they are transmitted from man to animals. Amphizenosis, they may be transmitted in either direction. So first we will see about plague. Plague is caused by Yersinia pestis. Yersinia has two other species like tuberculosis, pseudotuberculosis and enterocolitica which causes Yersiniosis which is a self-limiting GI illness. Pathogenesis of plague. Uh, the reservoir of plague is wild rodents, bandicoot and field mice. The vector is rat flea or human flea in which the rat flea is the most common vector. The human flea is Pulex irritans where the rat flea has three species Xenopsilla sheopsis, Xenopsilla astia and Xenopsilla brasiliensis. Xenopsilla sheopsis is more efficient and seen in North India whereas Xenopsilla astia is less efficient and seen in South India. The mode of transmission, uh, it is transmitted by the bite of infected flea which is the most common mode of transmission or by direct contact with the infected animal or by droplet inhalation such as a pneumonic plague. So first in, in actual pathogenesis, blood will be taken by the flea from the infected rodents or reservoirs and then this uh, bacteria which will be taken up in the blood meal of the flea will be 0.5 ml uh, of blood will be taken and 5000 about 5000 bacilli will be taken and this bacilli will multiply in the gut of the flea which will lead to blocking of the proventriculus which may be partial blocking or complete blocking. Partial blocking is more dangerous as the flea can survive longer whereas complete blocking is less dangerous as the flea will die early. So this uh, blocking of proventriculus, the flea will be unable to suck the blood meal, so it will die. Uh, on efforts of suck to suck the blood meal, before dying it will uh, take efforts to suck the blood meal from humans or rats, which will lead to regurgitation of blood mixed bacteria from into the bite, which will only lead to infection of the human. It, uh, a contamination of bite wound with the feces of infected flea is another mode of infection. Now we will see what is extrinsic incubation period. In extrinsic incubation period is the interval between the flea acquiring the infection and, and the flea became, becoming a blocked flea. So it is the interval between a flea actually acquiring the infection and becoming a blocked flea. It is uh, two weeks in case of Xenopsella sheopsis. Types of plague will be bubonic plague, pneumonic plague and septicemic plague. So first we will see about bubonic plague. The bubonic plague is the most common plague. In this the bacteria will pass through the local lymphatics and it will reach the regional lymph nodes where it will multiply. In the regional lymph nodes it will lead to the formation of bubos which are a uh, uh, tense tender swellings of the regional lymph nodes and the bacilli will be locked up in these bubos only. The sites of these bubos will be inguinal which is the most common site. Other sites will be crural, axillary, submaxillary, cervical and the site depends upon the site of the bite. There is generally no spread seen except on direct contact with the bubos. The onset is sudden. And clinical features include fever, malaise, lymphadenopathy and headache. The dissemination of bubonic plague can lead to pneumonic plague or, or meningitis. And next we will see about pneumonic plague. It may be primary or secondary. The primary plague is transmitted by droplet infection from infected person or animals. The secondary plague is by uh, dissemination from, pu from bubonic plague. The incubation period is 1 to 3 days. The onset is sudden. The clinical features will be similar to bubonic plague including fever, malaise, headache and uh, other respiratory symptoms will be seen such as cough, chest pain, dyspnea and hemoptysis which refers to cough present in the sputum. It is more fatal and it is infectious and uh, it, is, it is also an agent of bioterrorism. Another uh, type of plague is septicemic plague. The septicemic plague, it is uh, also primary or secondary. The primary septicemic plague is rare and generally transmitted by the 
uh, accidental lab infections of the uh, septicemic plague. The secondary septicemic plague is due to dissemination or spread of the bubonic or pneumonic plague. The incubation period is 2 to 7 days. Clinical features include blood vessel involvement, hemorrhage in the skin and mucosa leading to gangrene formation. It can lead to black death. It is also an agent of bioterrorism category A which is the most dangerous category of bioterrorism. And then lab diagnosis uh, specimen collected will be from bubonic plague pus or fluid from the bubos will be collected whereas in pneumonic plague uh, sputum and blood will be collected in septicemic plague blood will be collected in post-mortem cases uh, splenic aspirate may be collected and the transportation is by carry blair medium by following biosafety level 3 of transport direct microscopy by gram staining uh, in gram staining gram negative oral oval coccobacilli will be seen with rounded ends surrounded by capsule uh, and in vasin stain or methylin blue staining typical bipolar safety pin appearance will be seen in which there will be darkly stained ends with central clear area uh, culture it the organism is aerobic and or and facultative anaerobic so it may be cultured in blood agar and McConkey agar. In blood agar, non-hemolytic dark brown pigmented colonies are seen. It is dark brown in color due to hemin absorption. In McConkey agar, lactose non-fermenting colonies are seen. Therefore, colorless colonies will be seen. In cultures mere and motility, uh, gram staining, pleomorphic gram negative organisms and involution forms may also be seen. Motility, it is non-motile. The Yersinia pestis will be non-motile at any temperature. The other species of Yersinia, such as Pseudopsidopetalus or any other species, it will be motile at 25 degrees Celsius and non-motile at 37 degrees Celsius. But Yersinia pestis is non-motile at any temperature. So identification, it may be by automated methods or by conventional methods. By automated methods, it is by Malditoff and by conventional methods includes catalase, oxidase, ICUT and TSI, this is triple sugar ion. It is catalase positive, oxidase negative, ICUT, indole negative, citrate negative, urease negative. In triple sugar ion, it is alkali by acid and gas negative, H2S negative. So we can remember this way, it is everything negative except catalase. Uh, now before discussing the other uh, lab uh, the antigen and uh, detection and molecular methods we will see about the virulence factors of uh, Yersinia pestis. The virulence factors includes F1 antigen which is a capsular protein antigen encoded by plasmid which is PFRA. PFRA. It inhibits the phagocytosis of macrophages and it is uh, also antigenic. So by inhibiting ma uh, phagocytes of macrophages, it can uh, exhibit its virulence. The other virulence factors will include a PH6 antigen, phospholipase D, lipopolysaccharide, pigments, type 3 secretion system, other sins and sidrophore. Now we will see about the antigen detection molecular methods. In antigen detection, we will detect the F1 antigen which is the most virulence factor and is also antigenic. So it can be detected by ELISA direct immunofluorescence test or uh, immunochromatographic test using monoclonal antibodies. Molecular methods includes PCR by targeting genes of F1 antigen, pesticin gene or plasminogen activator gene. The treatment of uh, plague is by a uh, streptomycin it was used in the past now the preferred drug of choice is gentamicin because it is superior to streptomycin also levofloxacin doxycycline and chloramphenicol may be used prevention uh, it is by control of cases uh, by diagnosis isolation and treatment of the known cases and isolation precautions in bubonic plague contact precautions must be performed because uh, to prevent the contact with the bubos whereas in pneumonic plague there should be droplet precautions as it is transmitted by droplets and also control of fleas must be there by DDT or BHC control of rodents should be there and chemoprophylaxis by doxycycline or levofloxacin must be uh, done for 7 days not in all people, just in cases of contact of pneumonic plague. 
Vaccines are two, formalin killed vaccines and live attenuated vaccine. Formalin killed vaccine, it is injected subcutaneously in two doses, four weeks apart and uh, one booster dose, six months apart. So it totally has three doses. Two doses will be uh, injected four weeks apart and booster dose about six months apart. And con it is contraindicated in, in uh, infants below six months. And it provides protection only for less than 6 months and side effects are more. Live attenuated vaccine, it has EV76 strain it, and has significant side effects. So generally vaccine is not used except in cases where this uh, plague is seen more commonly. The next topic is tularemia. The agent of tularemia is Francisella tularensis. Mode of transmission, it, it, it is either transmitted by ingestion, inhalation or by insects. So it is transmitted by ingestion of contaminated food and water, inhalation of infective aerosols and biting of blood sucking insects such as ticks and mice. Clinical manifestations of tularemia include ulceroglandular tularemia. It is the most common clinical manifestation seen in about 75 to 85% of the cases. There will be ulcerative lesion at the inoculation site and regional lymphadenopathy. The other forms will be oculoglandular, oropharyngeal, pulmonary and typhoid-like illness. Complications include suppurated lymph nodes, acute kidney injury, hepatitis, empyema, pericarditis, meningitis, endocarditis and osteomyelitis. So basically all the, almost all the organs will be affected. Lab diagnosis of tularemia, specimen collected will be ulcer scrapings or lymph node biopsy. It uh, biosafety level 3 must be followed to prevent lab acquired infections and the culture. It is fastidious organism so it is difficult to grow in uh, normal culture media. So BCG blood cysteine glucose agar is the preferred culture media. Identification either by automated methods or by biochemical test. In automated method a white text is used. Antibody detection it is by ELISA or agglutination test such as latex and tube agglutination test. The PCR assay is uh, by detecting uh, the genes OMP genes which are the outer membrane protein genes of these uh, bacteria. The treatment of tularensis includes the use of gentamicin which is a drug of choice which is similar to plague treatment and alternative medications will be doxycycline or ciprofloxacin. Now we will see about rat bite fever which is also an important question. The agents of rat bite fever include streptobacillus moneliformis and spirillum minis. The mode of transmission will be by direct contact with the rodents uh, which are the reservoirs or food and water contaminated with the urine or droppings of the rodents. So this rat bite fever is also known as Haverhill disease or epidemic arthritic erythema. It has the agents will be Streptobacillus moneliformis and Spirillum minus. Streptobacillus moneliformis it is found in North America. It is gram negative, highly pleomorphic and non-motile bacilli which will be arranged in chains and tangled, filament, and tangled filaments with bulbous swellings. L forms will be seen. Spirillum minus it is generally seen in Asia. It is rigid, spirally coiled and motile. So spirillum minus is motile whereas uh, streptobacillus moneliformis is non-motile. The treatment of choice is penicillin. Now we will see about bite wound infection. It is not that important. Uh, clinical manifestations, lodging of organisms on the wound surface. Uh, it can be by uh, lodging of organisms on the wound surface or if there is breach in the skin barrier there may be deeper tissue penetration affecting the bones and joints causing osteomyelitis and septic arthritis. If there is invasion of the lymphatics it may lead to bacteremia, meningitis, brain abscess, endocarditis in case of immunocompromised individuals. An infection of the cutaneous nerves may also lead to lodging of organisms in the CNS, example in case of rabies. The bite infections include dog bites, cat bites, human bites. First we will see about dog bites. Dog bites are the most common bites uh, accounting for about 80% of the bites. And, but however the infections, the infectious at only 15 to 20% of these bites will turn infectious. Uh, age it occurs in children more than in adults and uh, it occurs in mo males more than females 
साइट द अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी इज द मोस्ट कॉमन साइट बट हाउ एवर इन लेस दैन फोर इयर्स ऑफ एज इट कैन ऑल्सो बी सीन इन हेड एंड नेक ऑर्गेनिजम्स इनक्लूड्स एरोप सच एस बीटा हिमोलाइटिक स्ट्रेप्टोकॉकई पैश्चुरेला स्टफाइलोकॉकस एक्नेला कोरोडेंस कैप्नोसाइटोफेगा कैनिमोर्सिस एनारोबिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स इनक्लूड एक्टिनोमाइसिटीज फ्यूसो बैक्टीरियम प्रिवोटेला एंड पॉर्फाइरोमोनास it causes it can cause rabies and tetanus next we'll see about cat bites the infection uh, it is less common than dog bites but infection is uh, more in cat bites about according for more than 50% of bites will be infectious gender it is more common in women than men and higher risk of penetrating injuries will be seen with cat bite infection such as osteomyelitis and septic arthritis can be seen the organisms in cat bite infections include pasturella multocida bartonella hensley tularemia staphylococcus aureus and anaerobes and can cause rabies and tetanus however these are rare manifestations and human bites uh, it is infected only in 10 to 15% of cases the types of human bites include occlusional and clenched fist uh, bites the occlusional bites refer to the actual biting by an by another human whereas clenched fist bites is not actual biting but when fist of one individual strikes the teeth of another individual it resembles a bite which is the clenched fist bite a uh, clenched fist bite is more common and it causes deeper infections the organisms indicated in uh, human bites are aerobic streptococci staphylococcus aureus echinella corrodens more common clenched fist bites haemophilus influenzae anaerobic uh, fusobacterium privotella porphyromonas and peptostreptococcus the other bites include rat bites snake bites old monkeys old world monkeys and seals walruses and polar bears rat bites will be caused by streptobacillus monoliformis and leptospira pasteurella snake bites will be caused by pseudomonas proteus crostidium bacteria it's fresh list can remember by pcb old world monkeys will uh, bites will be caused by herpes virus simiae it can reach the cns and cause serious infections seals and walruses polar bear bites can lead to seal finger and can cause chronic suppurative infections by mycoplasma foco cerebrae lab diagnosis the specimen of choice is purulent exudate aspirated from the depth of the wound or the surgery incision from the surgery of uh, any drainage or debridement a wound swab which is the most common specimen it is subjected to gram staining culture and anaerobic culture if anaerobic organism is indicated culture may uh, at least three cultures must be done in anaerobic organisms including blood agar chocolate agar and mcconkey agar in anaerobic culture must be done if an anaerobic organism is indicated such as in case of in case of abscess foul smelling exudate or devitalized tissue if it is present anaerobic culture must be done agents includes pasturella and capnocytophaga uh pasturella it is generally pasturella it causes pasturellosis by pasturella multocida is the most common agent the clinical manifestations uh, include in bite area there will be red swollen the bite area will be red swollen painful and low grade fever and regional lymphadenopathy will be seen in severe cases bacteremia can be seen lab diagnosis by gram staining gram negative coccobacillus is seen and the culture media it readily grows in the culture media identification is by automated or biochemical methods automated methods include malditoff and vitek uh, treatment it is by penicillin g and amoxiclav capnocytophaga infection it is caused by capnocytophaga ochreisia gingivalis and sputigena clinical features will include periodontal disease sepsis meningitis in case of immunocompromised individuals fulminant septicemia can be seen in cases of dog bites the risk factors includes heavy alcohol intake liver cirrhosis and immunocompromised individuals the lab diagnosis is generally done by gram staining in which fusiform filamentous gram negative coccobacilli is seen capnophilic it is capnophilic it requires carbon dioxide in blood agar it uh, orange pigmented colonies will be seen and it has a slow growth identification will either be by automated methods or by biochemical methods and treatment includes ampicillin salbactam that is it with zoonotic infections thank you